Hi folks, welcome back, or welcome, uh, depends if this is your first time or not. Uh, today I'm going to make some more progress on my Lister engine over here. I actually made an adapter to hang it upside down on an engine uh, stand. Uh, typically used in the automotive industry, but today is a... Uh, Start, well, finish cleaning up, and then start to reassemble. I'm hoping some of you did not get the wrong impression. This engine actually was running before I took it apart, but it was full of water. And uh, so I didn't run it very long. Uh, my mistake, I should have drained the water out first, but it was inside the light tower. I didn't think water got in there, but of course I didn't look at the exhaust. So this isn't so much a rebuild or recondition or any of that. It was simply take it apart, see if there was any damage from the water, and put it back together uh, without upgrading anything or cleaning. Well, I did clean, uh, not not as much as I would if I was rebuilding it. Uh, but, uh, because the rod bearing, the main bearing, is what takes the hit, so to speak, um, even though I probably could have salvaged the rod bearing that was on there, I decided I was going to put a new one in. So today is clean the crank journal, uh, which feels pretty good. Uh, but I'm going to polish it up. Then I'm going to mic the journal and see if someone had put an undersized crank in here. Uh, it's quite possible. This, in taking it apart and cleaning it and looking at the cylinder walls and stuff, this engine has seen a lot. Um, and it's seen a lot of abuse. So that's where we are. So I'm going to get you set up so you can look inside and see what I'm going to do. So first of all, you can see um, the intake and exhaust and then the plunger for the uh, fuel injector. And underneath you can see the connecting rod without a bearing in it. And finally the crank journal. So I wanted to show you the close-up uh, before I start cleaning much. Um, so there we are. I'm going to take this surface and clean it. I haven't decided how, how far back I'm going to go, with whether I use emery or just uh, use a leather shoelace and strop it a little. Um, but, um, we'll, we'll see as we go along. So in an effort to avoid some of the inevitable contamination from using emery or sandpaper or whatever, I stuffed a rag in here to try to capture as much of that as possible. Uh, so we'll see how that works. And I went and stopped and picked up a few cans of brake parts cleaner. Some new plastic gauge. My plastic gauge was so old that when I took it out of the package it just crumbled. And some Permatex Ultra Sick Slick Assembly Lube. I have to pull the uh, tappets out. Um, I guess you could call them lifters. They're not. They're. I think they're more tappets. Um, basically, pull the bottom end out down in there. Clean those. Put them back in with assembly lube. And my friend down at the auto, his his auto body shop, gave me some. 800 and 2,000 grit paper to take a look at this and uh, 
I might start with the 2000. This really feels really good. May not look may not look like much, but I don't think it's going to take much to clean it up. The last uh rod bearing journal I did was on my Tecumseh 14 horse. Tecumseh? Well, it was on a 14 horse. Oh, Kohler. Kohler 14 horse. Old style. My mistake again. Ran it out of oil. Seized up the rod. So I had uh, aluminum debris on the uh, crankshaft, the connecting rod bearing surface. So I used some muriatic acid to clean that up. And that worked really well and then of course I went through the sandpaper and finally up to a leather uh, shoelace to act like a strop and really polish it. This time I might actually, I have some twinkle. I have some other stuff but it's used for polishing silver. I hadn't tried that but I saw that on YouTube someplace so I might try that. Um, but as I said, this is really, and there's, there's nothing stuck to it at all. So I think a good cleaning is all it needs. Uh, so I'm going to go get my eyeglasses so that I can actually see what I'm working on. And, uh, and a leather, leather shoelace I have around here somewhere. Okay, I have my close-up eyes and my shoelace. I'm going to spray this a little. What bothers me a little bit is the main part of the bearing surface in here looks good. But right on the edge. Almost looks like looks like the bearing was too narrow because it looks like there's build up here, a little bit of rust. So we will uh, we're going to start with the 800 grit paper. Now I am going to, I think, sand this dry. This is the fun part, is trying to keep the sandpaper on here. Get the shoelace around it like three times. Probably a pair of needle nose would help on this. You know, on a big block Chevy or Chrysler, you get a little more room. <laughs> this is a, this is a kind of tight quarters in here, but we're making it. We got one. Of course, now the trick is is to try to get the loop around without without going over the leather you already have in there. Oh, and I think we've, we've been successful in that. Ugh. What I'm doing, and I'm not telling you that this is the right way, it's the way I do it, is I make sure that the, and you could, for this part of it, you don't need leather. The only reason I'm going to use leather at the end is, if you if you remember the old time barbers, they used a leather strap to really hone their knives, and I think it's called stropping, S-T-R-O-P, but if you keep one, one end of the lace tucked away on one edge and the other one on the other then you should be getting a fairly even fairly even uh, cleaning we'll see what that looks like I mean, as I said, I really don't think it needs that much. 
And as expected, the outside edge, ooh, boy, that cleaned it up quite a bit on the edge. The outside edge needed some help. And I think it needs more than that. So let's, uh, let me get my magnifiers. I gotta look at that. Well, <clears throat> I was worried about on this, this very edge here. And a little bit on this edge. Because it looked like the rust had built up. But in fact, it, uh, it's almost a fillet. It's rounded in there with just a little bit of surface rust. And this is the old bearing. And the old bearing doesn't even, when that's fairly centered, it doesn't even come close to that edge. So I am not going to worry about that. That cleaned up a little bit. I think it's time to actually just polish it. I There's just nothing there. It, it's, it's amazing that the water didn't do more damage to this but of course it was mixed with the oil so it had some protective properties um, so what I'm going to do now is is go get some oil and the next the next uh, go around with the 2000 is going to be um, with oil. So when I get done, I'll have to blow out the oil passage and make sure there's nothing in there. purposes a little three and one will be fine might be 30 or 40 years old it's an old can I'd have a little more room if I pulled this towel out of here but I really don't want to do that I'm trying to minimize the contamination This is worse than trying to get these shoelaces into my boots. Wow, come on. I suppose I could stop being stubborn and make like a little half round wire so I could get this under the bearing journal. Well, let's see what that looks like. Looks dirty. Because, of course, I used oil on it. Huh. Boy, that's looking pretty good. To me, anyway. Uh, no ridges, no, no pits, per se. So, all right, now we'll try to polish it. Haven't decided how to do that yet. Probably with a strip of, maybe a strip of microfiber. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we'll try to polish that up now. Let me go see what I can find for polish. All right, I think we've got something. Now I had to get rid of 
all the liquid on the top of my metal globe because that's only been sitting probably for 30 years so and what we'll do I think I'll end up taking out the towel that's in there oh look at that look at the crud on that where is that the polish that looks that black I'm probably going to have to do this crank in quadrants. So I may have to find a way to keep that from rotating as much. Not damaging stuff. I think that will be sufficient. Uh, maybe not. Well, it does do a nice job shining it up. I went and got some much longer cloth so I didn't have to try to squeeze in there. And what I've done is on the back side here, there's a gear on the crank, main crank, and a pin right next to it. Very convenient. So what I did is I put a hose clamp over that gear and it rests up against that pin to keep it from turning so that I can do the bottom like that. So now I just need to put some metal glow on and see what happens. And I'm sure some of you guys that do engine rebuilding professionally are cringing. But, you know, I, I'm looking at what the end result is. The end result is to simply get this guy so he doesn't knock, so he's going to last a little while. He's going back into a light tower that huh, may never get used again. I don't know. Clean out the goop from the get the paste out of there. I know the stuff generally evaporates, but you can get what I can out of there. As I do that, it cleans out a little more dirt. Well, I'm happy with that. I don't know if I should be, but I am. It really seems like it's a nice, nice journal. Now I'll mic it up. And uh, see if it's a standard. Two point one. Boy, it looks like it's two point one two five. Well, maybe two point one two. Two point one two three five. Now that's straight up and down. A little tighter on the outside edge. Yeah, 2.125. Pretty much all the way across. All right, I have to go up and look up the journal size, but that seems to be... Um, it's not egg-shaped which is a good thing. I do have to go find those two bolts that I dropped in there. I 
I have to go check that journal size, and then I'm going to uh, get the two rod bolts out that fell in, and then start assembling. I'm back. What I've looked up is the journal should be 2.125. So my mic seems to be slightly under, only slightly. But that means, A, there's probably a little wear, and B, it's not a ten thousandths or twenty thousandths under. So now the next thing to do is to put this piece of plastic gauge on there, this little, little plastic gauge. It's very thin stuff, and when it is is crushed it widens out you match it up to the width here and supposedly I should have 0035 alright the two bolts the two bolts are in uh, they're sort of being held in place with some luber plate a little bit of grease so that means I could knock them out easy enough again. So I really don't want to do that. So we are going to try to put this on. Oops, like that. Well, except now I need a new piece of plastic gauge. Since I lost the first one on the ground. Try again. I was thinking of using some some grease on the plastic gauge to hold it in place, but I'm afraid that would change the squishing dimensions. So let's Try not to do that. Oof. All right, in place. Tough parts done. Connecting rod is 18 pounds feet or foot pounds. I have to go get my torque wrench. I don't know if I have anything that goes that low. I have this nice little torque wrench. It only goes up to 150 inch pounds. I need to be at well. 180, no, what I say, 18. Eighteen inch pounds, of uh, foot pounds, which doesn't seem like a lot, but, uh, so that's 180 and 36 is 216. So I'm not going to get it out of this, but I know this will be a minimum. Now my good torque wrench starts at 20 foot-pounds, so we'll skip that. But this is one of the bending bar ones. They're not as accurate, but it's what's going to get me right in the middle. All right, that might be a little too tight, but that's okay. We'll see if uh, if my plastic gauge got crushed too much.
So now here's here's where it gets a little interesting. This is a somewhat subjective thing. So I have to take. Huh. You, I don't even. Oh, you can see it if I keep it in the shadow. But I have to match that up to. Do the other end because there's no plastic in there. Uh, there it is. So it's less than four thousandths. And more than three. But it's closer to four. Which would make sense because when I was measuring with the mic it seemed to be a little loose. So, um, I didn't check the tolerance on it. It was running with the old bearing, which was probably worse. i got to get that off of there. Get this off of there, a little bit of plastic. Or grease, whatever that was. So for my purposes, it's, uh, it's okay. So now, I'm going to try to get the piston down a little and it's hissing at me because I'm pushing against the compression. I would have both valves are closed but that's all right and actually I can probably do it by doing that and then get the installation lube, assembly lube. I'll have to squirt a little in there. I guess I gotta take the cap off first. Yeah. Didn't want to squeeze too good with that in place. And these nuts have been torqued down in both directions. So I guess we don't have much to deal with there. Definitely torqued down more in that direction on that nut. Alright, once again we'll start with the little one, which says it goes up to 150 inch-pounds, but it really is only making it to one... 46. Now I know there are hacks, I will call them, where I could put an extension on here and double the range for half the accuracy. But I probably should just go out and buy one. This is the second time in about three years. Of course, I haven't needed one in that range for like 30 years because I always worked on automotive stuff. Now I'm doing small engines. I need to get something a little better. All right, that was 146, a little light. Just for grins, I'm going to take this one, which starts at 20, but I backed it off 2, which is 18, but I don't know if it's K 
calibrated that low? Apparently not. Oh, I guess it is. Now the big question is, does it turn? And it does not. Wow. Hmm. Of course, I don't have a good place to grab it. Ah, okay. It does turn. I'm up against compression, I guess. Good enough. I keep forgetting. I should be showing you what I'm doing. Well, there's some marks in it. They probably should be replaced at some point. But again, not my not my uh, priority today. My priority is actually to get this guy running. I'm going to take the other one back out. And polish him up too. It does make a difference. They still look pretty bad, but better than they were. And, uh, There's those two. Now, will this... Mm. Uh, this is the one that was... I should not have put back in because I can't get to it. I want to take the injector and I just can't get that with the magnet. <sighs> I can probably get my hand in there if I get the counterweights out of the way. Let's see if I can get the counterweight, counterbalance. <laughs> Let me get in there. Oh, I can get in there. Don't know how much I can grab. All right, we'll take out. We'll take out that tappet. It's in the way. I want to gingerly try to get that up. It may not be coming out as easy as I wanted. All right, that's out. This roller was in not very good shape when I first took it apart. It needed a little freeing up. <laughs> now I gotta get it back in. Wow, this was so much easier the first time. 
Probably because I knew I had to take it out again. There it is. Put this, tap it back in. Those three are in. I can put a little bit of goop on the faces of those. I can try to fish out the rod for the oil pump. That looks pretty good. So now the question is uh, connecting rod. Time to do the uh, camshaft. And I think it is. So, and ow, for that, I did not set this up to be turned 90 degrees, only 180. So I think I'm going to figure out something so I can turn it. Well, first attempt at putting the camshaft back in. Get it past the tappets. I cleaned this bearing really good. And then I packed it with some grease, just, just in case. Suppose I should look at the manual. It's been a few years, and of course I've never done it to a lister. But I'm uh, expecting that that zero has to line up with that zero. But the problem is I'm going to be against some of the lifters. Although top dead center they shall be closed. All right, I gotta look and see who's who's tying us up here. <sighs> and I may have to take it off eventually. But I don't want to do it now. If I, if I lifted the head off, I could easily get it in. But I am going to try... Well, it's got to be that because the intake and exhaust are okay. So now I'm going to flip it back down. I can actually see and put some leverage on it. Uh, this is a little inserted commentary here because 
what you just heard was I said the roller for the injector was hanging up the camshaft well it wasn't well it wasn't the only thing it turns out that the intake valve although the tappet had cleared it was pushing the camshaft off to the side and the bearing on this side wasn't centered so just a little bit of persuasion and it went right in so here we are and the reason I have to insert this little commentary was right when you saw me trying to use the screwdriver to push in on the roller I ran out of memory on my memory card in the camera so um, all's well that ends well I guess you'd say and what I had mentioned before but didn't get recorded is next is this cover with the governor on here hooking these back up and uh, probably scraping the gasket off and putting a new gasket on see what else I have to do on the top end and then uh, I guess put the bottom put the uh, put the sump on it find a new way to hold this up so that's it for now I'm gonna go add this to my collection and then tomorrow we start again I'm starting to do reassembly now as you saw me put the bearing cap in and slide the camshaft in I've reassembled the governor put these back to approximately the right adjustments put some assembly lube on it cleaned up the gasket surfaces and now I'll reassemble this I am not going to spend a lot of time filming the reassembly process because anybody can turn a wrench and put a screw in if I come across something interesting I'll let you know about it um, I had asked last time and looked online about how this piece came out because I saw no good way of getting these pins out and it turns out there's two little pins one on each end they simply slide out and the cover is what holds them in place so that they can't slide out when the cover is on the cover comes here and the cover comes pretty close to here so that was an interesting find so as I said I'm getting ready to put this cover on tighten up this end I'll probably set it upright work on the top end a little more and uh, catch you guys up a little further down the road we're almost back to where I was a couple of months ago and where it was sitting for probably three years before I got my act together and finished taking it all apart so this isn't too bad I only had one one issue it looks like at least that I know of uh, and that is up here where this oil line goes in someone must have lost that and put a solid bolt in now maybe it's supposed to be solid and actually capped off and I'm gonna go look at the parts list when I go upstairs but that's about the only spare part I have I have one extra bolt that was it it's painted yellow so it has to go on the outside and yet for instance this bolt is not painted yellow but that's a bigger bolt these are bigger bolts so I'm really thinking that someone had lost it and just plugged it up I found a couple of makeshift things in here so I'm not surprised 
So pretty soon, I haven't put the flywheel on yet because that's like an extra 60 pounds by itself. So I think this is going to go outside, or at least in the lower, what I call the lower garage, my where the rest of this is, where I took the first half of it apart and finished assembling it down there on a decent day. Uh, second day of spring, we dropped from high 50s into the low 30s. <laughs> so I, I'll probably wait until it warms up a little more. Uh, I had one fatality, and that was this nut up here. But I had an extra nut. I've got extra metric stuff. And I've got some loose bolts here, here, and here, and a couple missing. But I'm sure that when I put the generator head on or some other stuff that these will come back. I, I, they're in there for a reason. They're in the right spot. So I clearly took something apart and put it back in. Uh, so... And this has this has a washer on it. This one here that looks like it belongs on an oil galley. I hope this is not an oil galley. Um, I do have way down here, which you can't see. Let's see if this thing decides to try that again. Yeah, you can see it. I'm, I'm missing. I'm not missing it. I haven't put it in. That's the uh, oil t uh, oil pressure switch. I haven't put that on yet because it's just going to hang out. So other than that, fuel line, everything else went together. I had to clean this up and adjust this. Someone had forced that on the inside. So that's that's it for today. Uh, we'll pick this up another time, and I'm going to go check that top fitting. A little addendum here. I'm not going to edit out my stupidity. Um, it turns out that I had actually taken this bolt with one of its copper gasket washers and put it in here. So I did have an extra bolt, and they happen to be exactly the same length. So um, this now has the proper bolt in it with the copper gaskets, and everything, everything is good. So that's where we are. Many of you will know what this is. This is the oil pump. And the two ball bearings in it were not in very good shape. So uh, I tried to clean them. I cleaned the bore inside pretty well. And that ball bearing, although probably was usable, it's got some black spots on it. So instead I have a brand new stainless steel ball bearing the exact same size. In it goes. And I'll put the retainer in after that, just like that. And the spring. And I did the same to this piece. I found a ball bearing that's within about five thousandths. And it rattles. That's all that matters. The oil will get by it. And it sounds, sounds a whole lot better now. Um... And I changed my mind. I am going to put this all together in here. It's going to get heavy. But I think that's the best way. I've cleaned this gasket surface. Clean this one. I'm going to make up a gasket now. What I think I'm going to end up doing, because where I have to go with this, is through these doors and down a couple steps. I am going to make a beam, temporary beam, that goes from that beam up there, which is a 14 inch I-beam holding up the whole house, and come just below it through the door and hang it off a couple of the joists here. I don't need them. You know, carry 300 pounds, that'll be fine. 
so I can roll that cart over to here, lift it up with a block and tackle, slide it out on the beam, and then put it on another cart down there or move that cart down there. So knowing that, I am going to build as much of it in here as I can. It is much nicer working in here. So it's been a little bit since uh, you saw the last thing I did to this. What I found uh, was that the fuel cartridge actually looked pretty good, but it was bypassed and instead, it's around here somewhere, They used an external clamp and an inline filter. They didn't want to bother with this. Don't know why. Uh, it, the filter seemed pretty good. The diesel fuel sucks. So I'm going to put this back on. Uh, found somebody online uh, that actually had a Lister Petter Genuine Parts uh, filter and uh, it, it looks like it's the right one. It certainly had the right part number in the in the uh, description and in my parts list but it looks like it might also be for several models so I will have to Take this apart, I think, replace that O-ring on the bottom, since I have a new one. Uh, replace whatever's inside here, the spring and bushing. And then replace what should be in the top. So, I'm going to figure that out. And, uh, and install that. Don't need to do that on camera. It's going to be a bunch of looking around and checking. These apparently are for bleeders. And it looks like they're knurled. There's actually not a wrench type on it, which is fine. So I had put this new hose on here so that I could get rid of that inline filter. Uh, I'm also going to run, which is against what is recommended, some Rotella T5, 1030. Um, it's really good oil um, for the amount this is going to run. Uh, if, and when I get rid of it, I can. someone else can change the oil. But that's really good diesel oil, apparently, from the guys that do a lot of diesel work. Uh, had some wiring to do. There was a broken wire up here. Don't know if you can see that up there. Um, also replaced down in the bottom the gener the uh, battery charger winding uh, was not hooked up correctly. And this one goes to the fuel pump. Uh, so that's, that's it. That's where we are with all this right now. Okay, a little update. This, well, uh, this fuel filter is all set. Getting that little gasket inside was a real pain in the neck, but the other one, it was, uh, it was pretty hard. So I'm glad I took the time to do that. Then I had to get this whole thing off the that cart. So I used 
this Yale chain block, it's called. Uh, put it through a bolt and a triple timber holding my house up, half-inch bolt. Uh, it says quarter ton, so it was probably about at its limits. 500 pounds. I'm thinking this engine is 400 anyway. Uh, the engine's about two, oh, maybe less than 400, but it sure seemed awfully heavy. So now that it's on the ground, it's going to get moved to the lower garage, which is only two steps down. I might just put some planks down and slide it for that. Getting it off the cart was the tough part. Well, folks, it's a gorgeous day here up in New England. Just watched the solar eclipse. And uh, I thought I was going to have part two of the Lister engine repair done. And in a sense, I do. However, there will be a part three. I have gotten so far as to hook a battery to this, see that it spins freely. And as I said, I put the fuel filter on. I was going to go get some of my diesel fuel to put in it. But first, I was going to spin it up with oil in it and see if I got any pressure out of this fitting. I was going to loosen it up. Didn't get that far. As you can see, this is at a bit of an angle because I've got a block of wood under the front of it, or the back, whatever you want to call it. And I should have known better with all the water and grayish brown slurry in the sump when I took it apart. I should have suspected there might have been a fracture in the sump from the water freezing. But when I took it out of the almond light tower, it still had liquid in it, so I didn't think anything of it. So I started filling it and uh, got about a half a gallon in. And notice down here a little drip. And now I went and looked at it and it is cracked. So I must have in my cleaning cleaned out the grit from the crack so that in fact it now leaks. Uh, So I, I learned a few things. Number one is this hook up on top, which I really didn't think was very strong, is more than adequate to lift it with my engine hoist. Uh, what else did I learn? That the sump doesn't like water in the winter. It was cracked before I got it. And just putting the oil in and Pouring it back out, it looked pretty filthy. So what I think I'm going to do, instead of using really good heavy oil, I'm going to go and get some of my diesel fuel and overfill it, crank it a little, not try to start it, good Lord no, but crank it enough to splash it around, pump it through the stuff, drain out the diesel fuel, do that again and try to get rid of some of the junk that I saw coming out of there. Uh, and then I'll put some oil in it. So that's it for this, this video. Um, hopefully I get back to this really soon. We're, uh, we're in springtime here and I have a lot of outdoor work to do. I really hope I catch up on this. I'd like to get this running. Uh, don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I might, I might actually take it to a shop and have it done. I used to do brazing, uh, and, you know, that worked fine. Uh, and I've looked online and I could 
probably MIG it or do something else. But I'm not so sure I want to go through all that. I, I don't trust my skills that much anymore. Um, it would be interesting if I brazed it. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm out of practice. So the next one you'll see is me flushing it, checking fuel pressure, I mean oil pressure, cranking it over. I mean, it does crank. I, I tried it quickly just to see if it would even turn, see if the starter was any good. The starter is awfully noisy, but that's not my concern right now. So huh, the next one is take off the pan, sump, I guess, uh, and, uh, and go from there. So thanks for watching. I'm sorry it turned out this way. <laughs> I'm sorry you put up with a video that didn't end nicely. But I wasn't going to show you just the good parts. I'm going to show you how I move along with this. My ultimate goal is to get it running to a point that I'm comfortable with it, that it should last a while, and put it in the light tower and do the rest of the work to the light tower and get rid of it. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like it, let me know. If you dislike it, let me know. If you dislike it, please comment also so I know what to change. Share it if you'd like to. Subscribe. I'm up to a whopping 50 subscribers now. <laughs> For what that's worth. Uh, but uh, I hope you found this uh, educational. Uh, I guess I'd say don't do what I do. I'm not a pro at it. But I don't think you'd want to do this anyway since it didn't turn out very good. So have a good day and hope, hopefully I'll get this done in the next couple of weeks.